Um, we're going to start here. i wait to see if somebody um, shows up here to have some questions. Um, I did want to go over a little bit over the next assignment. So this one will be a little bit more involved than the previous one, I believe. So let me go ahead and get um, uh, my assignment uh, started up here. Uh, start my, my dev box first. Um, and uh, oh, uh, let me go ahead and uh, oh, I need to get a few things going here. Let me get to the assignment five so I can uh, copy the link and um, accept the assignment. Uh, I'll accept the assignment. Um, and bring it up here. Uh, let's see if the dev box is up. Yeah, so the dev box looks like it booted up cleanly. So As, as usual, I need to close off my previous assignment work here. So, uh, go ahead and form the repository. Into our sync uh, assignment folder. Open it up. And as usual, you know, I encourage you to always go through the checklist, make sure everything's working. So we, we accepted the assignment, uh, cloned the repository. Um, so let's configure the assignment. Should create our VS Code directory and the uh, CLang format. Should get rid of any warnings about um, uh, the IntelliSense need to be configured. Um, let's make sure everything's building. We'll clean, do a make all, and uh, make our tests. All right, so everything's running. So for this assignment, again, uh, we are kind of using uh, the list class again. So there is one unit test um, already uncommon, might even be the same one from the previous assignment. Um, but we're gonna start with task one then. So that should complete your um, uh, your checklist. I guess I can um, first uh, issue here too, like I mentioned on the checklist there. So. We've just got five tasks for this assignment. Um, so this assignment, we're basically going to be um, creating a sorting algorithm using a merge sort. I'll just get task one. I guess I'll go ahead and do all of them like I normally do. Let's bring up the pull request. All right, so it should be ready to go then at this point. So, um,
So we're basically going to be adding in a, uh, a sort using merge sort here. So um, yeah, I mean, this, this assignment um, is um, about sorting, sorting, uh, uh, about sorting and searching. Um, and um, we're looking at, uh, and, and we're going to do some more with uh, recursion. Um, so, you know, the, the merge sort that we're going to be implementing uh, is another example of a recursive algorithm. Um, so we're actually going to be um, Kind of as usual, uh, you know, the, the first few steps are to create some um, functions. Um, in this case, we've got a, um, uh, we're going to be adding these uh, so that we have a sort for our list. So you're actually going to be working with the list class this time to add these particular uh, member functions, right? So once we add in this copy constructor that we need and this merge member function, uh, those are all you need in order to implement the basic uh, merge sort, um, as is described here. Um, and then uh, the reason why we kind of, well, kind of, one of the reasons we add a sort is so that we can sort the algorithm and then implement a binary search, right? So um, as you sort of learned on our materials this week, uh, binary search is much, much faster than just doing a, a linear search. Um, on an unordered list of items or an unordered set of items. Um, but as a prerequisite to do a, a, a binary search, you do have to have the items sorted, okay? So um, uh, we implement a search method um, using, also using recursion, using a binary, or using a recursive version of binary search here. Um, and then we, um, and add a little bit of functionality to our class here. So those are the five tasks. So um, I already had a few questions about this assignment. Um, so um, let's, let's, let's look at them one by one here, or we'll get started on them. Um, so the first one is you have to implement a, uh, a copy constructor, um, actually a sublist copy constructor. Uh, we basically do that because, you know, to jump ahead here, the merge sort works by first splitting the list into two separate lists, right? So we're going to use the, the, the sublist copy constructor to actually do that split part. Um, and then we recursively actually split it into smaller, small pieces, and then we use the merge function to merge two sorted sublists back into um, a list. So that's kind of um, the general description how the merge sort works um, on this assignment. So there's already a, a copy constructor that, that will make a copy of the whole list. Actually, uh, you have this for uh, the previous assignment in our list class. So we, we use that for um, the is palindrome, uh, specifically um, the, the iterative version. So you first had to make a copy of the list, um, and I asked you to do it using the given copy constructor, and then you had to reverse that copy of the list, and then you could use the, um, um, the, the equals operator to check if it was a palindrome or not. So that was, that was a previous assignment. So um, let's start by, you know, as usual, um, we'll uncomment the first commented out uh, test case, which is testing this sublist constructor. This sublist copy constructor. So um, So this is an example of the copy constructor. So if we uh, have a, an original list with five values in it, and if we call the, the copy constructor that you're supposed to create here, we haven't created it yet, but if we call that and we say we want the values from zero up to two, um, the, again, these are inclusive like we were doing in our previous assignment. Um, so that means that we need three values, the one from index zero, the one from index one, then the one from index two in this copy 
of the list that we create um, and we assign to L2 here, right? So after this, I mean, L1 should still be just the original list with the five values, but L2 should be a, a new list uh, with, with a copy of those three values, index zero, one, and two in it. Um, and so, so the, the copy, can, the, the, the sub list copy constructor looks kind of like the copy constructor. Um, but we're passing in two indexes instead of the total size of the um, array. Um, all right, we're passing in two um, indexes uh, along with the list, which is the portion that we want to copy here. So, um, so yeah, in this assignment, you, you don't have um, uh, additional files. You've only got the um, list.hpp and the list.cpp. So all your code will be going into the header file and the um, uh, the implementation file for our list here. Um, oh, so and and again, uh, we don't uh, give you the um, um, function documentation. So make sure you add those in when you're adding in. Uh, your your code here. So in particular, uh, kind of like the copy constructor. So the sublist copy constructor looks pretty similar to copy constructor. So you can start with that. Uh, it just has two additional parameters, right? Um, So, um, and in fact, I mean, instead of a stub function, we could start by just making a, a copy of that construct that we have, um, and then make and then fixing the signature to make it work, right? So, um, so here is the uh, copy constructor. So just make a copy of it. Um, certainly, uh, if, if you are copying documentation, make certain that you always first check it and make certain you fix it, um, as well as the signature. So in this case, we've got two additional parameters. So the begin and end in indexes. So that's the begin index of the sublist to make a copy of for this uh, new list. Always, always invent continued lines by two spaces so that these uh, uh, separate parameter definitions uh, stand out. All right. So. So this copy constructor um, copies the indicated sub portion of the original list uh, to uh, be the new list we are creating here. Um, And yeah, you only have to make a minor change to actually get this to work. So, um, but but yeah, if we leave it like it is, um, everything should now compile and run because I, you know, I added in my declaration. Um, I've got uh, an implementation more than a stub here. I'm just redoing the full copy instead of copying the sublist portion. Um, so that but that should allow uh, this code to compile and run, even though uh, currently we're ignoring the uh, parameters here. Um, but 
uh, but yeah, it should compile um, and it should um, run okay. Um, but yeah, we'll find that um, our tests are failing uh, right here because we made a, a copy of the whole list instead of the sub portion of the list, right? Um, but yeah, I mean, that that uh, that is the correct signature um, and, and you just need to, to modify the sublist copy constructor to only copy the indicated portion of the, the sublist. There. That's, that's the first task, right? Um, so, um, So merge um, is going to be kind of the heart of the um, uh, merge sort that we do for, for uh, part three here. Um, so um, so this, this um, expects two other lists as input. Um, so the, the, the two lists should be passed in as constant reference parameters, which Hopefully by now you're kind of getting used to that. That's kind of a normal way that we pass in instances of other objects um, as, as constant reference parameter if we're not actually modifying those. So um, it, it makes a couple of assumptions. So the, the, this merge is assuming that the two lists that are passed in are already sorted, right? Um, and it also assumes that the, the lists that we're gonna that, that we're gonna be merging the values of these two other lists to become the new values of the current list. Um, so um, this this merge function is, is assuming that. Um, um, So uh, we're assuming that um, the size of the list that we're um, calling the merge function on is big enough to hold all the values of the past and lower and upper list as well. So, uh, and uh, yeah, somebody had asked me a question about this. Uh, so I, I, I did ask for people to um, test this and throw an exception um, if it's not big enough. So the very first thing you should be doing in this merge method is um, if the size is not big enough to hold the combined size of the two other lists. Um, I'm throwing an exception. Um, so let's let's show kind of how that uh, looks here. So let's uncomment the second test case, uh, which is should be testing the, the merge. Um, so basically, again, if we have result, uh, result has to be big enough to hold uh, uh, the, the merge of the two lists. So here we've, we've got two lists that I call lower and upper, which has two values in each of them. Um, so the, the result, um, and, and these two lists have to be sorted, right? So, so uh, sorted in this case, alphabetically by um, um, uh, the, the characters, so C comes before N in the alphabet, um, N, N becomes before T. But, but uh, here, you know, uh, when we sort these, you know, it should be Cypher, then Morpheus, then Neo, then Trinity, uh, in that order should be the result, right? Um, but here we construct an empty list of size four, which is big enough to hold the result of the merge here. And notice then we call merge where we pass in lower and upper. Um, and after we call merge, then um, we've actually got those four values sorted here. Right? So, um, and, and notice that result doesn't, re uh, sorry, merge doesn't return a um, explicit uh, result. So it's a void function in this case. 
probably describe that as well in the function documentation, right? So um, I, I, I can go ahead and give you that one as well. Um, so um, in this case, I consider kind of the, the merge as part of the sorting and searching methods. So, so merge is a, a void function um, that um, takes in two references, two, two constant references to uh, lists, right? So we're passing in two lists, uh, a lower and upper list, right? So our, so our um, um, function signature looks something like this for merge, right? Um, Um, uh, so I'll get to the exceptions here. So I asked you to throw an exception here um, as well. Um, uh, I was just going to mention, um, it's usually a good idea to try to keep the methods in the same order. So, so whatever order you have them declared, so I've got all the constructors and the destructor first and then get size and string and then operator, overloaded operators. So after the uh, output streaming operator, um, Um, is where we should have the merge here. So I'm just going to find the output streaming operator and, and put my merge uh, right here. So I'll start, you know, so this is a void function, so I don't have to do anything uh, to get it to actually compile. But um, again, don't, don't think of the documentation as an afterthought. I mean, you need to create this um, and, uh, you know, when, when you make the commit for task two for merge, I mean, you should have the documentation already for your merge function. So, um, so given uh, two assorted uh, uh, smaller lists, merge them into uh, the values of this list. Um, so we have a couple of assumptions here. So we assume that the two input lists are already uh, sorted for this merge to work. And we assume that um, this list has enough room for the merge. So if this list is not big enough, uh, we um, um, simply throw an exception. Um, um, saying we can't do the merge. Right? We have two parameters, lower and upper. So this is one of the two lists we are merging into this list, right? And really, my description for the other parameters basically the same. Um, and in this case, um, there are also there are also throws tags, um, or I think you can also use like add exception or something. Um, so in this case, uh, we need to throw a. Um, List memory bound exception um, if uh, this list is not big enough to hold all of the merged values of the uh, two input lists. All right. Um, okay, but anyway, so that should be enough to get it to compile. 
um, so that we can um, run these tests. Now that I've defined the merge with the correct signature, um, So, um, so in this case, we had a compilation error, right? So, um, um, so it's not compiling correctly um, because I must have made a, um, a um, mistake in the function signature, maybe. Um, oh, um, I did forget. So I, I forgot to. Um, so in this case. Um, this undefined reference because it's supposed to be a member function, but I did forget to specify it as a member of the list class. So this is just a regular function called merge instead of being a member of the list class, which is why I couldn't find it here. So. Let's try it again. All right, so there we compiled and, and ran successfully that time. So, um, um, and then one final thing before I move on to the merge. So, um, Uh, well, we can talk about the uh, I'll talk about the algorithm for merge as well. Um, but I thought we were testing. Um, um, yeah, so so we should be uh, throwing a list memory bounds exception. So um, if um, the two lists um, are size six and five. Um, uh, we need a size of 11 to um, um, uh, hold the, the merge result here. Um, so in this case, we expect um, uh, uh, an exception to be thrown uh, instead of um, uh, actually trying to merge these lists into too small of, uh, of a space for them, right? So, um, We can use the get size on our other two lists for that. So, you know, something like um, 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 So I don't know if this is the best way to do it, but um, so if we know how big we need to be after the merge, uh, we can test that um, if, um, if if our size, um, which you know we can just directly use the um, uh, the size member variable or get size. So if um, We need to find out first if we're big enough to hold the merged uh, result, and if not, throw an exception ex instead. Right. Um, so for this to be valid, so you always have to kind of check your bounds here. So um, you know, so for example. Uh, 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 like, like for our first test here, we need to have a size of 11 or bigger to hold the merge result, right? So if our size is 11, that means that we have um, an array that's big enough to hold 11 values, right? So, but if it's, it's, if it's 10 then it's, or smaller, then it's too small. So, so that should work for like a test. 
Um, So the, what you have to do um, is just use the throw keyword to throw an exception. So again, somebody was kind of explicitly asking about this. So I don't know if I had an example. Uh, I mean, you can read our textbook um, on the section about uh, exception handling, so throwing exceptions and catching exceptions and things. Uh, So yeah, I didn't have kind of an example for you to use. So, so it's as simple as this. So we're actually going to create a new instance of the object that we want to throw for the exception, um, and then uh, throw it with the throw keyword. Right. And in this case, it doesn't return from this. So, so any code after you throw an exception won't be executed. So you can kind of think of that as as a as a return statement. Right. So, so after this, it, it is safe to do the algorithm to uh, merge these lists um, because we know we have enough size um, after this if statement. Um, because if it executes throw, uh, throw exception, it won't run any of the code after that um, exception is thrown there. So. so list memory bounds exception takes uh, a message. Um, and um, I, I usually like to try and make certain that the your messages for exceptions are meaning you know helpful for debugging. So in this case, it would be good to know what the what all the sizes were. Um, something like. So I'll put in the um, lower size um, and the upper size. Um, this might be long enough. I might want these on separate lines. So. Um, So this object's not big enough to hold the result. All right. Um, and then, you know, you can pass in a, a regular um, string to the list memory bound exception. So I can use an O string stream. Um, and convert it to a regular string, like home string here. So I guess we have to include um, um, spring stream. How do we do include string string? So um, must have misspelled that. So. No string, string. All right, so I, I should probably check that, but hopefully then that that's actually passing. Um, for example, um, uh, we should be passing the test on 402 um, by throwing that exception here. Um, so now, let's see.
but yeah, you should you should normally not be doing like I'm doing here. I, sh I shouldn't be looking at these until I get the uh, the, the test passing for the ones above that. But uh, but um, uh, but yeah, I think I think we are passing because we, we're we're missing we're we're failing 384 here. But then after 384, we jump to 410 here. So um, so that's probably getting those tests here. Um, All right, so that should be enough of him. So, so all, if, if you have to throw other exceptions for uh, other or future assignments, um, you know that's kind of usually the pattern that that I do. So, just throw uh, you create an instance of an object that you're gonna uh, give to the throw keyword to throw an exception, right? Uh, and we'll usually actually define uh, those objects that we throw as exceptions. So. All right. As far as the actual uh, algorithm, um, so what you need to do is you need to uh, have a loop um, and need to be copying values from the two input lists that I call lower and upper uh, into uh, this list's item. So, so we're going to be passing, we're going to be copying values um, uh, from lower and upper. Um, and again, you know, this is a list, so you can use um, the... Um, you can use the get size, but you can also use the uh, indexing operator like we did for the previous assignment to get the values. But uh, but basically, you have to keep track of what the what the lower index is. You know, and the lower index should start at zero, and what the upper index is, and the upper index should start at zero. And you need to loop um, uh, and then check. So if the value at lower is less than the value at, at, at upper at the current index for each of those. That then you copy the one from lower into um, copy the one from lower into um, um, this set of values uh, at, at the current index, right? So, um, so, so again, yeah, to, to go through this algorithm here. So you start with you need two indexes to keep track of, like the, the lower index and the upper index which would be zero for both of these. So at that, whatever the current index is, so you compare the, the, the value at the current index for the two input rays and copy whichever is the smaller value into uh, this list. And then you increment the index of whichever uh, one you just copied from. Um, and then we're going to keep repeating this until um, we've copied, until we've got all the values out of one of those lists. So at some point, uh, one of, of these lists will have copied all the values from it into this list. Right. So after that, then I'll have a few have potentially one or more values left in the other list. So um, so so one of those those arrays, lower or upper, will have values left in it. So then you need to copy all the remaining values. Uh, from that um, that array into the uh, destination. Right? There are a lot of details in this, so this will, this will take some uh, thinking uh, to get the merge to work right, but this is the heart of doing a merge sort. So you, you definitely need to get this correct um, to get um, our merge sort to work here. So, um, All right, and then I'm not going to go. I'm, I'm maybe going to some more details of the other tasks on Thursday. Um, um, I'll just mention a few things then about the remaining three tasks. Um, so really, I, I think actually implementing the sort is a lot simpler than than implementing the merge if you have the merge working correctly for our merge sort. Um, So, um, so basically, I mean, the, the signature for sort, um, is, um, um, simple. Um, so sort 
doesn't return any result um, and it doesn't take any values as input. So all sort is expected to do, if, if you look at it, um, so it doesn't take any input and it doesn't return a result. It's just that, um, you know, if I have values in my list and I call sort on them afterwards, they should be sorted uh, alphabetically in this case, since we're, we're keeping lists of strings here, right? The signature is, is relatively simple for sort. Um, here is the algorithm, and this is a recursive algorithm. So you first start by splitting the instance into two as equally sized lists as you can, right? So if you have an odd number value, you can't split them exactly equally. So, so what you should do is just take the size of this list, um, do an integer division by two, um, and then that will give you the, the size of the two halves, right? And then you're going to use that. Um, um, you're you're going to use the, the, the sublist copy constructor to, to, to um, um, copy, to, to make, um, uh, to split the instance into two equally sized lists like this. I kind of gave you the code for that. So, um, so yeah, if I have a list of size five, um, I might split it at index um, uh, two, right? So if I do five divided by two, if I integer division of five divided by two would give me 2.5, which will give you an integer result of two. So you could end up splitting it like this. So, so the lower would be split from zero to index two. So you get the values zero, one, and two. So you get three values into lower. Um, and then you create another list, which was upper, which you have to split that from, you know, the one greater than that. So, so the indexes for that one should be from three up to four. Um, so, so three and four should go into uh, the upper list, here, right? So once you've done that, uh, basically you're going to use recursion. Um, So I passed over the, the base case. So the base case of this, uh, which is described here, is that if you're given a list that's of size one or smaller, um, it's already sorted. So, so I mean, you, first you want to check. Um, so if you have a, a, size, a list of size one or size zero, uh, just return, because in that case, you don't have to do anything for the sort. So, so a list that's empty or a list with only one item is sorted by um, definition. Otherwise, if, if the list has two or more values, you need to split it into half into like lower and upper lists. Um, you're going to call sort recursively on both of these new copies. So you're going to call lower dot sort and upper dot sort to sort the, the two sublists, and then you're going to call merge. Um, so so you'll call merge um, on our, on yourself uh, on, on this object with the with the the, the two sublists that you split it into. So you want to merge the lower and the upper after they're sorted, right? Again, remember the merge is expecting them to be sorted, so um, this algorithm should sort them um, um, as, as a result of calling sort on the, the two sublists, and then we merge those back together into this list. Right? So um, this is kind of rather sophisticated. But the code is, is, is fairly simple. I mean, is using recursion. So you've got your base case, and they've got like three or four statements in your um, general case here. Um, but, um, but, uh, but, but yeah, this is powerful, but it's mainly powerful because it's using merge um, and it's using your, your sublist copy constructor to actually create sublists, break it apart. Um, Um, all right, and then more practice with recursion. So uh, for task four, you have to implement um, an actually a, a recursive binary search. Um, so I'll talk more about this on Thursday, but, but the basic idea is, is we'll, we'll assume that the list is sorted. We're gonna be searching this list ourselves. So this is, again, this is a member method of our list class. So if we ask to search for an item, um, Basically, we're going to pass in the item we want to search for. So 
our signature looks something like this. Oh, and and um, um, this list, since we're using recursion, um, we are uh, going to pass in like a sub list to search. Uh, so so um, 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 so again, I mean, just describing this. So so this um, list one actually has twenty values in it. So the indexes are zero nineteen. So so to search the whole list for Agent Brown. Uh, we want to pass in index zero, which is the first index, and index 19 is the, the last index. That'll search the whole list um, using a binary search. And the result should be it returns the index where it finds the value, right? So if, if we search the whole list for the woman in red, um, um, yeah, after the list is sorted, the, you know, agent brown should be end up being at index zero, and the woman in red should end up being at index 19, which is what we're... Um, what we're finding in that test there. So, you know, um, if we haven't shown the binary version of, of, of uh, the, the recursive version of binary search yet, um, it looks something like this. Um, so it's another example of a divide and conquer like our merge sort. So, so you want to calculate the middle index uh, of the sub portion of the list that you're given. So, so the middle uh, uh, of, you know, from the begin to the end. So, so the middle of this would be approximately 10. So if you take 19 plus zero, which is 19, you divide by two, and that would give you your middle index there. Um, and then you want to test that value at the middle index to see if it's what you're searching for. And if it is, you just return that. So that was a successful search. You return the index where you found it. Otherwise, uh, the, the, the value that you're searching for uh, has to be either to the less, you know, to the left of the middle value or to the right of that middle value. So if, if I'm um, searching the whole list and um, um, my middle value is like nine, let's say it's Neo. So if I'm searching for Agent Brown, uh, Agent Brown is to the left of Neo. Um, so I would uh, recursively call the, the binary search um, on the sub list from zero up to the, the midpoint minus one. So zero to eight in that case, right? But if I was searching for the woman in red, um, it's going to be greater than Neo. So in that case, I would I would recursively call my binary search on the indexes from 10 to 19. Right. Um, so that's what's being described here on part three. Um, and then. Um, And finally, like I said, I'll, I'll talk more about this stuff on Thursday, um, but because um, uh, I didn't do wrap up here. Um, but um, normally, when you have a search method like this on a list, uh, we we don't normally call it. We, we don't normally kind of expose uh, some of the details of like the recursive binary search that we're doing. So, so normally, when we call search, uh, we just want to have a search method uh, where we. Um, um, specify the value that we want to search for like this, okay? So the last task is we're going to modify the API of our list class to have a second, an overloaded version of search that takes just the um, value that we're going to search for. This is actually going to call the recursive version. Um, so initially on the whole list, right? Um, this also does another thing. Um, so this is going to check first whether the, the list is currently sorted or not. Um, and sort it. Um, so, so you actually have to implement an is sorted method um, to check whether the list is sorted. And if the list isn't sorted, we'll first call sort um, and then uh, use the, uh, the binary search to search the list here. Um, all right. So like I said, I'll talk more about these if people have questions on these on, on the, the the, the last task, the three, four, and five um, on Thursday. Uh, but I do need to stop the session for now so I can get to the next one. Um, and uh, yeah, I'll post this as usual and uh, send me questions by email. I'll come by on Thursday if, you, if you're working on the assignment uh, and ask some questions then.